When it comes to the 411 on fishing, our guides have the latest on what's biting in your region, what to use, and also where to go. Plus, Dave Farrell is going to show us the latest stuff at the workbench. So get yourself a drink and a snack because it's time for the Texas Insider Fishing Report. Welcome to the Texas Insider Fishing Report. Presented by Yamaha. We're happy to have you all back here on the Texas Insider Fishing Report to do some catching. All right, Rick, we're your hosts, Brie Gabrielle and Rick Murphy, along with your stellar captains from around the state. And today we have our friends from Casa Vieja here yep. to talk about fishing in Guatemala. We but do. Rick, I can't believe April's almost come and gone. It's like crazy. I know, <laughs> but you know what else has happened? We what? got a new spectator in the studio on the front of the workbench, Brie. Yes. That would be your first deer ever. And look how he's now made appearance. I, I pick him up at the taxidermy man today. You for did, you. and I came in, and it was such a surprise, and I'm so excited. I can't wait to get it in my house. And if you want to watch how I caught that, caught it. How Come you? on a fishing show, how I shot that deer. Make sure you go to our YouTube page, Captain Rick Murphy. All right, to make it through today, Rick, we will need our trusty workbench guru, Dave Farrell. So, Dave, what are we getting into today? Well, we're talking about kingfish. You know, the kingfish are starting to come in because the water's getting warmer, and there's a lot of them around, and we're going to show you how to target them and catch them, hopefully. Sounds good to me. Okay, Upper Fresh Regioners, we're hitting up Lake Tawakini and Lake Fork for some big ones, so let's patch in our guide, Johnny Geis, to give us the details. Hey, Rick and Bree. Hello. Hey, man, uh, April is about the most exciting month to fish on old Lake Tawakini. The white bass or the sand bass are called here in Texas. They're about through spawning. They've left the creeks and the river, and now they're running in big schools on the mid and lower end of Tawakini. Uh, these prolific game fish, they usually surface in large schools almost every morning in April, and you can keep 25 of these white bass over 10 inches. So it usually doesn't take long to find the sandies busting up on the main lake on shallow points and humps, because they're just gorging up on these thread pin shad and they're fattening them back up after the spawn. The white bass, uh, they usually weigh about one to two pounds and uh, they follow the shad and any type of shad imitation bait will work great when they're schooling. Uh, I like to use a half ounce up to a one ounce jig head on swim bait. Pretty hard to beat that combination. I use a bass assassin sea shad and either white or chartreuse. That's an excellent swim bait uh, trailer and you can catch fish at all depths with this. If the sandies are up at the uh, blowing up on top, I cast out to the front of the surface in activity, try to get ahead of them, reel the swim bait real fast, straight in, you got one on. Uh, once those fish go down, you should let the uh, bait fall down about mid-depth and uh, swim it through the suspended fish. Then uh, as, the, as the schooling ends up, we uh, reel it slowly along the bottom and catch those fish when they continue to uh, feed on the dying and cut shad that they crippled up during the feeding frenzy. So. Another great bait for the white bass is a slab, and usually one ounce or heavier slab works the best. Again, white or chartreuse slabs are the best color. Silver shad color is good also. Otawakini has four types of striped bass. Um, the yellow bass or barfish are very plentiful, and they can be caught almost any time on the rip route down by the dam, as well as on the humps and road beds and any other hard bottoms. These old yellow bass are smaller than the whites, Usually only weigh a half pound or less in size, but yellow bass are great table fare. The meat's real firm and white, and it's excellent on a fish fry. There's no size or krill lemon on striped bass in Texas, uh, yellow bass in Texas, so you can keep all you want to clean. The striped bass, the stripers, and the hybrids are the larger species on Tawakti, and they can reach weights up in the double digits. Uh, guide friend Matt Cartwright, man, he's been having some excellent success on catching these big stripers and hybrids. After his customers limit out on the whites in the morning, he goes for the big stripers. They're running in schools in about, in about 40 to 50 foot of water, but they're coming up to about 15 to 30 foot water column to feed. Matt says a tip to watch, watch closely for several loons. They're working in the area and they're feeding on large gizzard shed. When you see the loons, that's where the big stripers are. You can also find the uh, larger striper and hybrids on your side scan electronics. He's catching the best using a two ounce slab, letting it fall quickly through the school and reeling it as fast as you can back through the feeding fish. 
You can sometimes find these stripers in hybrid schooling on the surface here in April, and nothing's more fun than catch them on a large topwater lure in a swim bait. So here's a picture Matt sent with his son Mason. He had a cancellation the other day, and man, they went out and caught them some nice ones. Boy, they did. Good job. That looks like a wrecking crew there, bub. All right, what else you got for us? Look, look at this next picture. This is just a normal group trip. As you can see, he spends a lot of time on the cleaning station over at Twarkley. I see that. Hey, moving on along. These old black bass on fork, uh, they're about midway through the spawn. They're still bedding at this time. Uh, best areas are mid-lake down towards the dam area. There's a good topwater bite going on in the upper lake. Also a good frog bite. Uh, bluegills are now bedding, and you can find the bass around the bluegill beds. Again, a frog, that's an excellent choice to use when fishing around the lily pads and alligator weeds. I uh, use a hollow body, hollow body frog, uh, cast it in the thickest cover you can, and that'll trigger some aggressive bites. Be sure to use 50 pound or larger braid on your frog setup and try to wait until you feel the fish before you set the hook. That's much easier said than done. Many fish are lost by setting that hook too soon, so give them time. Another favorite bait I use this time of year is a swim bait. A swim jig with a kind of a frog trike trailer. Black and blue swim jig works great. I found it best to use a green pumpkin or watermelon color trailer. There's some, some bass starting to move out now to the main lake points and you may find some schooling activity on four. Put on a large walking type bait, top water bait, and hit the best points you can find. We got a lot of muscle shell beds here with uh, those points with the shell beds. They're the very best ones to target. Here's a good tip, watch out for the birds. Gray herons and white cranes give away the best areas. When the shad activity's there, you'll find the bass. Here's a picture of good topwater fish I caught this week. That's what I got, Rick. All right, well, you sure had a good report. We appreciate you very much. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the hot spots from the Upper Fresh region. My man Johnny says, Lake Takawakini, uh, water is stained, 60 degrees. 2.63 high, catfish are good on live baits and cut baits 25 to 45 foot of water. The white bass and hybrid stripers are good on swim baits and in the creeks. Lake Fork, black bass and crappies still spawning all over the main lake. Bass are hitting soft plastics on topwater lures in the shadows, or in the shallows, I'm sorry, and then crappies are best in 15 to 25 feet of water starting to get a brush pile. <gasps> Take a breather. All right, next we're fishing the Star Tri Middle Fresh Region <laughs> waters, more specifically on Toledo Bend, Sam Rayburn, and Lake Livingston. So, Matt, tell us what's going on. All right, guys, I'm going to jump right into it with the bass fishing on Toledo Bend. Uh, it's really centered around the shad right now. The majority of the bass have already spawned, and they're focused on eating shad to get their weight back up. So, it's, it's a great time of year. Uh, you can find them in a broad depth range right now. Some of the bass are still hanging around those shallow flats, especially the ones that just finished spawning, uh, and then others are out kind of on the point. Uh, but I wouldn't fish deeper than about 15 feet right now. Um, so think basically zero to 15. Uh, look for those shad and the bass breaking the surface, especially early in the morning. That's how you'll know you're in the right area. And this is mostly a, a morning thing with the, the shad really getting active. Uh, so get out there early and take advantage of that dawn activity, especially in the, the shallow areas. Uh, in those shallow areas, swim baits and frogs are good around whatever grass or, or uh, stumps and timber is around in that area. I like white or black most of the time uh, as far as the, the color right now um, when they're on these sheds. And the Bass Assassin Little Boss swim bait is a great one for this. Uh, and then out on the point, a crankbait or a Carolina rig are the ticket. Uh, Carolina rig, I like to use a bass assassin vapor shad and either green pumpkin or watermelon colors because it's just such a good bait fish imitator. Like I said, it's all about the shad, so keep it that way. And then over at Sam Rayburn, uh, around the grass, uh, fishing is so much fun right now. You'll want to focus on the shallow grass you can see because that's what those shad are going to be using to spawn when they're spawning. And uh, there's a variety of different types on Rayburn, but the bass like it all. Uh, like I said, just try to stick to the stuff you can see. And I kind of like to keep my skeeter boat moving right now. Uh, I'm burning frogs and swim jigs over the grass until I start getting bit. And then once I get a bite or two in the same area, that's when I'll drop the power poles down and kind of cast all over that area because a school of bass will usually be concentrated in a certain stretch of that grass uh, in, in a certain kind of little area. So it's a good idea to also have a follow-up bait rig right now 
And as for that, I go with the Bass Assassin Fat Job. I like to rig it, uh, a green pumpkin one. I like to rig it weightless on a four odd hook. And if I miss a fish on the frog or the swim jig, I throw that bait in there and I can often catch that fish with the follow-up bait. Now to the crappie, uh, on Toledo Bend, they're transitioning back to deeper water. A lot of them are still being caught around the bridges and some are beginning to show off on, up on uh, offshore timber. But regardless of which place they're hanging out, uh, the same depth of about eight to 15 feet usually applies. Now the bottom depth can be as deep as about 25 right now, but the fish suspend in that eight to 15 range. Jigs and minnows are both good for catching them. And uh, I've got a, a funny photo here for you of a bunch of Japanese ladies I got to take fishing a while back, a few years ago actually. Uh, just a fun memory of, of fishing for crappie this time of year. Uh, none of those ladies spoke a lick of English, maybe five words between them all. But uh, we managed to get them off some crappie, and that was a lot of fun. <clears throat> all right, man, you finish? Uh, I got a little bit of white bass for you. All right, go uh, ahead, give it to me. fish for right now. Salida Bend, Sam Rayburn, and Lake Livingston are all full of them. Uh, pretty much every lake in the Middle Fresh region has got them. It's pretty much the same pattern on all these lakes. You're going to want to look for them in about 10 to 20 foot of water around shad and catch them vertically jigging a silver spoon. Uh, they're really aggressive this time of year, and they're really tasty when you turn them into fish tacos. So get out there and get some of them. All right, bud. Thank you so much. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the hot spots from the Middle Fresh region. He says that uh, the bass on Toledo Bend are chasing shad in the flats and out in 15 feet of water. Swim baits, frogs, crank baits, and Carolina rigs are good on Sam Rayburn. It's all about the grass with the frogs and the swim jigs. The crappie are suspended in 8 to 15 feet of water on Toledo Bend, and white bass are in 10 to 20 feet of water. Now, guys, as you can see, joining me is the owner, Kristen Salazar of Casa Vieja Lodge in Guatemala, but she's also my teammate in the No Sancocho. Hey, you know, five-star service is what we really strive on at Casa Vieja. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that, Kristen? Yes, definitely. And we take care of you from the moment you land in the airport uh, down to your, your way at the lodge. Now, what we also offer is uh, uh, helicopter rides down from the airport to the lodge. It's about a 30-minute flyover volcanoes, plantation fields, and we actually now built a helipad in the back of the lodge. So you're right there. Uh, also, what we do is our fresh caught mahi sandwiches. You catch one on board, catch it before lunch, you get it served up hot, nice, and delicious. Um, back at the lodge, we got beautiful, accommodating rooms. Everyone has AC, obviously, delicious drinks um, and some appetizers when you come back from fishing. Mm -hmm. um, anything you need, we're there to fulfill the smallest request. We got the great pool area, the cheeky hut, all of that stuff. But, you know, the real reason why we all go there is certainly because of the fishing. So how many boats do we have as well as what kind of fishing do we do in June, July through the fall. What do you see happening? Yes, so we have nine boats down there. They range from uh, 35 uh, step contenders up to a 44 feet sport fisherman. Uh, we got a 19 bedroom hotel and primarily we're catching sails, but people come to Guatemala to catch a lot of sails. We're averaging about 12 to 15 sailfish per boat per day. Um, summertime and fall, we're getting a lot more mahi, a lot more tuna, and a lot of blue marlin chasing those. We average about a 20 mile run, so we get a lot of clients from Texas, from Houston, Dallas that come down. It's a, it's a two hour flight, you're down at the lodge, you're out fishing, it's quick. Now in June, we got a special event for fathers, and so tell me about that. Yep, Father's Day weekend, we have our Father's Day fishing friendly. With that, um, we invite families and friends you get bonus points when multiple generations have a hookup cool. for doubles and triples so it's something fun uh, to do with dad with grandpa even with uh sisters and brothers so i love it it's fun for everyone you might have to sign the murphys up for that sounds like a plan all right well brie sign brie up for that where too. Are we going? <laughs> thanks for coming kristen <laughs> all right we're dropping our lines in the fish bite upper coast region next here on the texas insider fishing report but first dave farrell has a lot to say at the cca workbench for some rigs and techniques yeah we're going to be talking about those kingfish that are on the beach how to catch them get something shiny they like the shiny stuff they like the shiny stuff i like the shiny stuff too yes, we'll be you right do. back <laughs> The Texas Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Casa Vieja Lodge, five-star angling in beautiful Guatemala. 
Garmin, join the club. Sportsman's Adventures, fishing for adventure. And Skeeter Performance Fishing Boats, eat, sleep, fish. Reliability, Yamaha is known for it. And it's something boaters value because these days few things are built to last. When we find something that is, we hold on to friendships, traditions, outboards, because every second on the water is sacred. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters choose Yamaha for the long run, for life, because reliability starts here. Remember the glory days of gasoline? It's just not made the same anymore. Kick your gas into gear with StarTron. Pump up the performance in all of your engines. Cure the problems of ethanol with the power of enzymes. And maximize your mileage every time you drive. Kickstart your engines with StarTron. For the Bay and beyond, team up with the best and rule the Bay in a Skeeter. Proven with 19 consecutive NMMA Consumer Satisfaction Awards. And right now, through April 30th, you can buy, save fish with rebates of up to 2,500. Versatility, control, performance, and design. Visit your local Skeeter dealer or online at SkeeterBoats.com. Skeeter, it's more than a boat, it's a lifestyle. Have you ever felt your heart pounding while feeling the power of a tarpon in the Florida Keys? Or experience the changing colors of a mahi as you bring it on board? Whether it's in the Bahamas, the Florida Keys, Guatemala, or the Florida Everglades, Murphy's Law Sports Fishing has the ability to guide you to the fish of a lifetime. To book your trip today, call 305-246-0673 or go to murphyslawsportfishing.com. Well, the rigs and techniques are one of my favorite segments, as you know, Dave, because I learned so many cool things. Tonight we're talking about kingfish, so yes. let's and just get right into it. We've got a lot it. of crap here. Well, you know, as the, as, the, as the summer comes, you know, it's, it's the end of spring and the start of the summer there, uh, the kingfish start to move in. And the, they like that warm, clear water that blows in with all that little bit of wind that comes in during the spring there, late spring and summer. And it, as that stuff blows up onto the beach, the kingfish come right up in it. You know, they follow all the bait, and they but they really like clear, clean water. And, you know, all the way from Port Aransas all the way down to Port Mansfield, there's great kingfishing all up and down that beach during the summertime. And there's a lot of different ways to catch them. Um, you know, during actually June, they'll even come all the way up into the passes, and you can stand on the jetties and stand out there and cast big, uh, uh, like, rattle traps, any big shiny mirror lures, you know, big stuff that'll get their attention. Uh, big plugs like that steel shad, you can actually troll those steel shads and these as well, you know, uh, right around the jetties and they'll come, you know, put a little section of wire on there and mm -hmm. you'll catch them. You know, kingfish have a lot of teeth, so whatever you're gonna be throwing out there, you have to use some hard wire in either between number four, number five, number six, you know, depending on the size of the fish that they have. Um, so you, you always want to have some wire out there because they their teeth are razor sharp, just like a wahoo's teeth. They're up, they're both mackerel fish, you know, a wahoo and a and a king mackerel and, and the Spanish mackerels too. There'll there'll be Spanish mackerels out there at the same time. Mm -hmm. So you know you got to have a piece of wire, you know, or, or you're going to lose it. These kingfish they like the real shiny stuff. You know, you want to try to get your, your hooks as far back in the baits as possible because all mackerel fish like to take the tail off stuff on their first come through. You know, th that's how they eat. That's their, that's their main way of feeding is they'll come just swim straight through the bait at rocket speed, either from below or from the side. A lot of times you will see them come straight out of the water and go rocketing up, you know, 10, 15 feet in the air, you know, with, a, with your plug or your top water plug in their mouth. Yeah. And there, there's just a lot of fun to catch that way when you can get around them and, and throw a top water plug. But, you know, a big spoon like you got there in your hand, like I said, anything that's shiny and imitates those pogies and bait, you know, baits that they, they're swimming around, they're, they're going to do well. 
Also, you can use a ribbon fish rig. You got one right here. It's a, it's a, oh boy. Oh boy, just go there. and keep talking. Yeah, you, you, it's a long, you know, a ribbon fish is a long fish and they're very, kingfish love to eat them. And when you get a, a ribbon fish rig like this, you put the big the little jig head in his nose and you put your little, your little treble hooks all the way down the ribbon fish. So in case he comes in from the side and tries to take the tail off, he's gonna get a mouthful of treble hooks. Right. And you can do that same thing when you're using just a regular live bait rig. If you're if you're catching some jacks or little pogies, blue runner. a blue runner is a great kingfish uh, bait because they stay alive and stay hardy. You pin one of these in the nose and put the other one back by his tail, you can either let it hang free or pin it in the bait. You know, if he's a big frisky bait, you can pin it in there. It's not gonna keep him from swimming and, you know, get you a live bait out so there. So you use a triple strength eagle claw, yep. treble hooks? Yep, number twos are, you know, treble hooks are your friend because like I said, that, that kingfish's mouth is a rocky place mm -hmm. and it's hard to find a purchase in there. And so a, a good bunch of treble hooks will work. You know, they can be a little dangerous, you know, if you've got a big string of them hanging around and you throw a kingfish in the boat, but go ahead and put the kingfish right in the cooler. You know, yeah. don't mess Put around him with box. him because he's got those sharp teeth and if you're using those treble hooks, somebody can get messed up in them and you don't want that to happen. Now, you also use a lot of trolling plugs there, either lipless or ones with lips on them. And these trolling plugs are really great because these have a small, actually we're gonna talk about these in new products, but these trolling plugs are really great with a small back so that the fish can get a hold of them. So. Good job, Dave. No worries. Bree, let's keep going. I'm so excited about this show. I'm ready for the next captain. Me too. All right, let's say hi to Captain Carl Weston in the Fish Bites Upper Coast region where the fishing is good, but the catching is better. Talk to us, Carl. Hello, Rick and Bree. Yeah, uh, the trout bites are uh, really good here. Um, moving closer to summertime here in the Upper Coast, part of Texas, the trout have really been lighting up the topwater scene. Just this past week with the temperatures rising and the longer sunny days, it's been amazing. This weather has given us a chance to pull some beautiful fish to the shallow grass flat. They're really hitting on our bass and sash and shrimp. Um, my recommendation would be throwing a four inch in either a pumpkin seed, red glitter or watermelon color on an eight ounce jig head. In addition to that, live shrimp on a popping cork or a small live croaker I've been debating the choice over in the West Galveston Bay area. Drifton uh, Shell Flats in Trinity Bay has brought in some great fish as well. Artificial and live shrimp have been the ticket to putting a nice stringer on the boat. And uh, here's a little sneak peek of uh, what Shane's got for groceries today. Nice picture of a trout. Oh, that is a nice picture, bub. Nice. Man, I don't get you guys and all your waiting, but that's okay, go for it. What else you got, bud? <laughs> well, we're gonna go after the redfish again. Um, these fish are staying hot. The Sabine Lake area is proven to be hotter than a winning streak in Vegas. And with those water temps are reaching the low 70s and the bite is getting better at every cast. The best spots this week were around the shell flats, close to the drop-offs. These reds have been tearing up live shrimp on a popping cork or a suspended twitch bait on top water. Over in East Galveston Bay, the redfish bite has also been heating up on those grass flats. There's been plenty of nice slot reds caught in these areas with the same rig as we just spoke of in Sabine. And uh, I believe we have a picture of Shannon here with a gorgeous red. Yeah, man. All right, I think it's time to go offshore where you like to make your living. So tell me a little bit about it. Well, let's talk a little bit about mangrove snapper today. Um, in our state water fishing within our eight mile mark has been very promising this spring. Mangrove and red snapper have been schooling around the near shore wrecks and rock piles. When locating these fish on our Garmin, we have noticed the marks closer to the bottom are mostly red snapper. If you're marking fish halfway to the bottom, this could be mangrove. I personally like to chum a little to bring the fish closer to the surface in hopes to identify them. Uh, most times, if the mangrove snapper are present, you'll see them mixed in with the red. And, you know, this tactic only works when the water is cleaning in the gulf this time of year. That doesn't happen very often. But uh, I like to keep live and dead shrimp on board just in case they decide to be a little picky, too. You know, if they're hungry, squid will suffice, but my favorite rig is a live shrimp on a small circle hook tied about three foot of 20 pound fluorocarbon. And uh, 
We have a nice picture of Mr. Brandon with a pretty mangrove, Texas mangrove. Man, that's a stud. Dang, that's a big one. All right, bub, what else you got for me inshore? Or you got, well, you're offshore, I'm sorry. Tell me about the swordfish. Well, we talked about that last week, so I figured let's talk about it. Uh, moving to one of my favorite tasting fish, the swordfish. You know, springtime sword fishing in the upper coast of Texas is very exciting. Between cold fronts, the seas lay down and give us an opportunity to go deep for these beautiful prized fish. The same tactics we use in the heat of the summer work in the winter and spring as well. You know, your deep water drops, uh, ledges, holes, hold these stunning fish all year round. When it comes to the best rig techniques, I turn to my good friend, Tyler Hoss with Check and Bottom. If you've never had the opportunity to go after one of these fish, I highly recommend contacting someone like Tyler to get some pointers and tips. I cannot express enough, you know, how much I've learned from him and others like him. Um, you know, Tyler is always happy to help and he's very knowledgeable about these fish here in the Texas upper coast. So uh, I believe we got his website there, www.checkandbottom.com. Um, like I say, he'd be, he'd be happy to help anybody. And Tell us about this picture of Tyler and Brittany. Well, this is a wintertime swordfish uh, with Tyler and Brittany. <clears throat> well, I can tell you, I checked the bottom with him, and we really wrecked him when we were out there. So I highly recommend that you got to go with him. Let's go ahead and take a look at the mirror lure hotspots from the Upper Coast region. Carl says that inshore, the inshore hotspot is going to be trout, drift, live, or artificial shrimps over the shells and reef in Trinity Bay and around the grass flats, and then offshore mangrove snapper. We are finding them on the near shore wrecks and rock piles of live shrimp on a small circle hook with some fluorocarbon leader is gonna work for those mangoes, baby. You recommend them. I recommend <gasps> them. We're headed to the lower fresh and Garmin coat. Garmin and Lower Coast Region next on the Slow Texas down, Insider every. Fishing Report. So before we go, remember to keep up with everything fishing in Texas. Make sure to visit our website, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and follow and tag us in your pictures on Instagram. Also, if you miss a show or need a refresher on rigs and techniques, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube page, Captain Rick Murphy, where you can see the show posted every Thursday amongst other fishing adventure videos. We'll be right back. The Texas Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Contender Boats, always in the game. Bass Assassin and Saltwater Assassin, the best lures, period. Alvy Reels, a better way to fish. And Murphy's Law Sport Fishing. Book your trip today at murphyslawsportfishing.com. An entirely new species of extreme predator is moving offshore. The Yamaha 5.6 liter V8 XTO offshore outboard. Extreme big block thrust and power in the industry's first direct injection four stroke. Quiet, efficient, powerful, and proven Yamaha reliability. More than an outboard, it's a fully integrated power system. The all new Yamaha V8 XTO Offshore. Why is Casa Vieja Lodge on everyone's bucket list? Left teaser. Left one as well. Two fish. Everywhere. Right flat teaser as well. Right, left flat, right flat teaser. Come to Casa Vieja Lodge and check it off your list. Finding a shoreline is easy. Finding a sure thing is not. For over 20 years, anglers from Kitty Hawk to California and every shore in between have come to know one thing, that nothing says no to fish bites. So just stop with the fishing and get busy with the catching. Ask for Fish Bites or Fish Bites Fight Club Lures or visit fishbites.com.
Today's Power Pole tip, we're talking about the Power Pole Micro. After being introduced a few years ago, the Power Pole Micro has taken off and has become popular on small skips like my Maverick Micro here and boats up to 1,500 pounds. Also canoes, John boats, kayaks, and now more popular than ever on paddle boards. The cool thing about the Micro is that it's easily installed with four or five screws to the back deck of your boat or front of your boat. It can also be installed on the side of a John boat or a canoe with a clamp-on accessory, and it comes with a 15-foot power cord, which runs to the boat 12-volt battery, or like I have on this one, has a lithium-ion rechargeable battery that's good for 100 cycles up and down. The neat thing about the Micro is, like the big power poles that are on your big bay boats, it's swift, silent, and secure, and runs strong all day long. For more information on the micro, go to PowerPole.com, and that's today's PowerPole tip. All day long. Okay, let's move on into the lower fresh region on Lake Amistad, Travis, Decker, LBJ, Falcon, and so many more. Our guide, Matt Reed, has his work cut out for him, so let's jump right into it, Matt. Yeah, we need to get this thing rolling, trying to report on a bunch of them this week. Uh, uh, Lake Amistad bass, they're mostly finished spawning. Uh, still a few on beds, but there's a great bite right now around the shallow grass. If you uh, throw a swim bait, a swim jig, or a chatter bait up there in that shallow water around the hydrilla, uh, the numbers are really good with some big ones mixed in. Moving on over to the Austin area, Lake Travis, uh, the fish are starting to school. They're getting past the spawn. They're, they're grouping up. Uh, you can throw a, a you know, walking style top water bait into those schools and catch a ton of fish. Also, a small swim bait or a jerk bait uh, works great on those school fish. Uh, catching some bigger ones, uh, throwing you know, throwing the big top waters around the bluffs and stuff, uh, you know, even on up into the day. Like Decker, uh, the discharge is on, running water, uh, and there's a ton of fish schooling in that discharge now because of the moving water. Uh, you need to, to wait for them to surface. Those small you know, small swim baits or fluke style baits. Um, having some hundred fish days there on a full day, says Brian Cotter. Uh, LBJ, Inks, and Marble Falls, there's a great uh, frog bite going on in the shallow water there now. Uh, if you love to get those explosive strikes, get you a hollow belly frog, uh, throw them around any type of cover that you can find, logs, reeds, uh, anything shallow. Those post spawn fish are up there and they're really in the in the mode to feed back up. Moving on down to Falcon. Uh, Falcon is in full blown summer pattern. Uh, the best bite for me has been on a Carolina rig or a Texas rig soft plastic in an eight to 15 foot range. Uh, they're on rock type structure, uh, either points or ledges. Crankbaits are beginning to dish out a big one every now and then. Uh, I love to catch them throwing that big crankbait. Uh, if you prefer to fish shallow, there's also a decent bite flipping, you know, the shallow hardwood cover that's still in the water. Uh, Choke Canyon, uh, the spawn is done there. They're post spawn, early summer pattern, uh, which means a really active top water bite early in the morning around the hydrilla. Uh, they'll either bite a popper or a walking style bait. Uh, throw it till the sun gets high. It's always a, a ton of fun to get them to blow up on the top. After that, you want to move to the outside edge of the hydrilla. Throw a Texas rig worm the rest of the day. You know, any points or anywhere a creek channel comes up close to that grass can be a big key. Uh, got a picture there of a big old bass that Mike Bates uh, caught the other day. It did choke. Uh, Mike's doing a real good job guiding there. And, uh, mm. Everybody loves that big old fish. Yeah, man, I love it, and I didn't even catch it. <laughs> All right, what else? You got some white bass for me, Papa? I got a white bass report from Lake Somerville. The whites are gathered back up on the main lake in large schools. Look for the bait and the fish on your electronics and throw spoons or crankbaits, and you can catch you a load of them pretty quick that way. And that picture is just a, a cooler full of whites that are, are, are looking for somebody's dinner table. I love it. All right, tell me about the crappie in the luck. The crappie are biting really well at Falcon. Uh, they're back out on the brush piles on the main lake in that 12 to 20 foot of water. 
I'll get you an eighth ounce jig and drop it on them and you can catch a bunch. One thing about a crappie, always remember to hold your jig above his head, above the brush. A crappie will only feed going up. He won't go down to get him. Hey, there's a tip for you. That's thank nice you so tip. much. All right, Matt, thank you. Great report this week. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the hot spots from the lower fresh region. Matt says that we're going to make sure that we go do our thing. Uh, let's see. In Lake Amistad, the bass are tearing up in the shallows around the hydrilla, throw swim baits, swim jigs, or chatter baits, and have an extremely fun day. Extremely fun Extreme. day. I love it. All right, Captain Chad Kinney is helping us get our fish and catch on this weekend in the Garmin Lower Coast region. So let's hear what he has to say. Heck yeah, we got you know, offshore, inshore, everything, and some new product stuff we're going to talk about, which I love doing that stuff. So starting out, which region we don't talk about a ton, but Baffin Bay has been producing some really good trout and some redfish mixed in there, also some black drum. Um, so you can definitely reach out, you know, from Corpus Christi, the Rivera area, from Baffin, even from Port Mansfield here. Um, and you can fish the rocks all the way down the land cut. So I spoke with uh, uh, the Reynolds fishing team. These guys are pretty good. They're young guys, but they're really good fishermen. You got Connor and Hubbard Reynolds. These guys are on the Legend Series. They fish up from Aranda's Pass, Baffin, a bunch here in Mansfield with me. And uh, they said the Baffin bite's been just on fire. They've been really hammering it out there. They said the trout fishing has really been good, wading early with top waters. Uh, they're throwing those top. Uh, top Dog Juniors on top on the sandbars with the scattered, scattered grass beds there. Work it early right through there. Work the edge of the break also with those top top waters and that stuff works really great. Once you reach the edge of that deal and you're waiting and the fish start falling off, go ahead and switch over to uh, a, to the deeper end like that. And I've always pitch on a saltwater assassin. You can't beat those baits at all. I like chartreuse or anything else like that. You can't go wrong with that bait, but take, pin it on an eighth ounce jig head and work the bait a lot slower. So throw it out there deeper and that deeper deal, let it sink. Kind of bounce it off the bottom to me a softer bite, almost like a winter bite. They're always kind of transition this time of year doing that stuff. But it's been good, solid keeper trout from that 18 to 22 inch range like that. Also in the bathroom area, talking about redfish and stuff like that, drift along the deeper rocks and grass beds for the reds and there's black drums mixed in there. Popping cork and live shrimp are really working well on this stuff like that. There's been some oversized redfish, which Baffin always kind of holds some stuff in there, and Nyma hold, also holds some big old reds and stuff like that there. You know, they're gonna put up a really good fight. So a new product I want to talk about is Alvi spinning reels. These things are great on big fish. You got a great drag system. I was lucky, I personally tested this thing last year in July and spent months in the water wade fishing. It's definitely the most durable spin caster I've ever tried before. I've done a bunch of other products out there, and the longest I ever had one last was two to three weeks. This thing actually lasted three months, and I never washed it, never touched it. They said, just go beat it up. I did. And after three months, the thing was still turned. It wasn't like brand new, but it still turned. I opened it all up, and it still looked great. It had a little bit of salt, but it was, it was unbeatable. I got them all over my boat now. They're great. And that Alvy Reels has been in business for 100 years. So they're bringing spinning reels in, a bunch of new products. We're coming out the rest of this year, and we'll talk about that later in the show. But we got a picture of great redfish here. That's an oversized red there in Bath and Bay, uh, caught by the Connor guys there. And of course, they released that one. So. That is a big one, bud. The, yeah, it's a good, good solid fish. There's a bunch of them stacked in there like that. It's, it's really fun when you get that 2,500 algae out there and just let them run. They got the drag and won't heat up on you. But when you head out to that uh, offshore, head out to like that 42020 NOAA weather buoy out there. You know, guys from Francis Cash can hit it, Fort A. Uh, we hit it from Fort Mansfield here. The guys from the island South Padre will go hit it. You can read the water temps or anything else. It helps you out. You know, deeper rigs also for Wahoo action. And the way in, it's the way to do it is come back in your favorite state water snapper spot you know if you want a few grocery stop make a few drifts catch some fish you know a good time but talking about the wahoo it's i talk about it a bunch but it's a season form um, we haven't been finding any weed line stuff like that water's still kind of a little greenish out to three four hundred feet but there's definitely fish out there it hasn't been like a crazy bite but it's been, been well worth going and taking a look look for bait on the surface you know bait balls definitely utilize your garmin gps and your sounder look for uh, you know bait and fishing definitely fish the structure whether it's we line current changes, which we haven't seen that stuff. So what I've been getting really hard is your your bottom structure, your wrecks, ridges, you know, all the bait on see bait balls in there, work that stuff. Full Islanders, you can't beat it. You know, rigged with a ballyhoo. Um, I'll run three lines, black and purple, and that is my favorite color, definitely on that Islander is a go-to, but run two short and one long. Easier to work that structure. I talk about it a bunch, but you can turn quicker than anything else. If you have a triple knockdown, you know, you're not gonna be going through five lines, but if you get a one big single one on, you know, you're gonna be in good shape. And the Wahoo can short strike a bunch, which I like doing a bunch is get a double rig, double hook rig on there and put, or a real long single, but put that hook back as far as you can in that Ballyhoo because you're gonna short strike and if they do start doing that to you, 
be ready and drop that to free spill real quick. A lot of times you'll pick him up on a short track, they'll come back and hit it and you'll be in good shape. So I got a really cool picture, just caught the other day. Got a good walk over there, got a little, we call him Little Rich for the figure. He's a, he's not a Little Rich, he's an offensive lineman here in a D1 school, but got a good 60 pound plus walk over there. He been, he's holding it like it's six pounds. You know? Yeah, well, he's, he's a, we call him Little oh, Rich, but he's a big guy. boy. He's a stud. <laughs> Just so is that Wahoo. They're big, both studs. You know? yeah. All right, tell me what's happening. What else you got for us offshore? But, so so my, my philosophy, which is great, go out there and spend some time for Wahoo. You know, Dorado will show up here a little bit, but go out there, hit that, and when you get one off the bite or two, you get a little bored. Best thing you do is head out on the way home. You know, fish your state waters. That's nine nautical miles from the beach, any which way you want to look at it. But snapper's holding out there 60, 90 foot of water. Make a drift. Best thing to do right now is I love doing is get some fresh bait, tip it on an eagle claw jig. It's got the trocar hook with it now. Those trocars are just money. They're sharp, real, real durable. And uh, just make a few drifts, drop down, catch enough for dinner where it's, you know, three, four, five fish. You know, it take you 20 minutes, 15 minutes, and head on home to the dock. All right, Bub. Thank you so much. Great report. You covered it from top to bottom. And I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the lower coast, shallow water, shallow sport, lower coast hot spots inshore. Head to Baffin Bay for good trout action with some bigger redfish. Try pop and cork with two foot of diamond fluorocarbon leader and a bass assassin chicken on the chain, four inch sea shad. And then offshore, out of the lower coast, head deeper for the Wahoo action. Try purple and black lures trolled at eight knots should work very well. All right, the Alvey Reels Middle Coast region is next, and it's casting its shadow right onto the workbench where Dave is unveiling some beautiful new products for us. Ain't that right, Dave? That's right. That's right. This thing is smooth, too, man. You gotta love it, these Alvey Reels. Smooth Although I seem it. to be working with a short rod as usual. Well, you know, <laughs> we can't all be winners. We'll be back. <laughs> The Texas Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Ameritrail. Load, launch, relax. Turn on the bite anytime. Tie on a mirror lure. Diamond Fishing Products. Our reputation is on the line. And Startron. Cures and prevents ethanol fuel problems. At the pinnacle of super high output, four-stroke outboard performance, you'll find Yamaha VMAX SHO, Yamaha's game-changing SHO technology. From exhilarating V6 models to the sleek inline fours, there's a VMAX SHO for everything from bass to bone fish. It's an extended family of four-strokes, engineered for lightweight, inspiring performance, and rock-solid reliability. Discover VMAX SHO and elevate your expectations. <laughs> only real with over 100 years of heritage. Alvi reels are manufactured using the most reliable components. Alvi state-of-the-art drag and retrieve rates are perfect for any fishing challenge. So whether it's a side cast or spinning reel, Alvi makes a reel that best fits your needs. Alvi reels are manufactured to best practice standards and are in fact so robust that the Alvi also comes with up to a 10-year salt and sand warranty. For more information, go to alvius.com. The new product showcase here at the workbench. And Dave, yes, let's sir. just get straight into it, bud. Well, we're going to start with that reel that fellow was talking about. We got the SR200 Orbiter, you know, Alvi reel. It's a beautiful reel as you just take a look at it. You know, it's one of those reels that you pick up right away and you give it a couple spins and you go, man, this thing's made nice. You know, you can really tell when you when you do it. Anyway, it's got a, it's a 5.81 to retrieve, uh, 5.8 to 1 retrieve, 33 and a half inches per 
turn of the handle, yeah. you know, so you can pull a lot of line in with that thing. It's got nine plus one stainless steel ball bearings, 20 pounds of max drag. It's got a far, uh, carbon fiber disc drag mm -hmm. and a reinforced carbon motor, a rotor actually, and a heavy duty stainless steel main shaft and a brass pinion gear. It's just made to last forever. You know, and these, these guys, guys have been in business, as you say, a hundred exactly. years building s surf casting reels, right. side cast reels. Right. So now they've gotten into the spinning business and <clears throat> it's really, what I like, Dave, is that it holds 200 yards of 12 pound mono and then 165 yards of 10 pound braid top shot. Yeah, that's a lot of line. That's a lot of if line. If you're if you're deep that deep into the line, you can don't worry about catching him anyway. You probably won't see him ever again. <laughs> yeah, you will with Alvy. You'll be yeah, able to you catch probably him. will. All right, next we got the diamond uh, braid 8x there. Uh, this is a Gen 3. It's a solid core braid, which you know instead of laying flat, it actually has a round shape to it. So it is way smoother, casts a lot longer. They got these uh, eight braid, you know, it uses the eight uh, carrier braiding system and a really uh, high tech process that they use to do those braids. And they also have a real nice uh, color dyeing now and a, and a good coating to make it extra, extra smooth. Uh, very UV resistant, you know, which is important nowadays. You don't have to worry about leaving it out in the sun and it, it has really good UV resistance. And it comes in 300, 600 and 3000 yard spools, you know, and offshore blue, orange and dark green. You know? Yeah, I really like this stuff. You can really see and feel the difference yeah. when it's going through your guides. The 30 pound is like 10 pound diameter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's really, really It casts thin. a long ways. Next we have the Halco Max 190 and 130. The That's the 130 there, the little 130. They're lipless plugs. And these things are really tearing it up where I live right now. We're catching everything on them from dolphin to uh, kingfish to wahoos. Everything has been eating them. You control them from two to 12 knots. Uh, they go really fast, which is which is great. What's, what I mentioned before when the kingfish part is you notice that the tails are really thin mm -hmm. and it gives great exposure to that back hook. You know, a lot of mm -hmm. times when you're pulling plugs, you get a lot of bites, but you don't get a lot of hookups. These things hook a lot more fish, especially those toothy critters. You know, you got seven aught inline single hooks on the 190 and triple X uh, trebles on the, on the little one. They all both come in seven different colors. Nice. Too. All right, last but not least here, we got some red eye trolling lures. I got three different kinds here. Uh, some, some little bullet heads from, made from stainless steel and also from aluminum. They make a lot of different metal headed lures. These are little bullets and, and the other one's a cone. This one's got a little jet head as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. So they, you can pull those for dolphin, kingfish, wahoo. You can put a little hook, single hook in it by itself if you want to. Or you can put one of those on the nose of a ballyhoo well, on a shotgun or whatever and catch a tuna fish or anything. You know how some days those wahoo are really, they're just tough sometimes where yeah. they don't want to bite? Yeah. I wonder what would happen if we went through the same process, trolling at 15 knots, but went down in size and, you know, with this. Well, you'd have to use a big trolling weight or something. <clears throat> of course you or would. Or something like this, which is enough the red eye. 777, which is a, it's a 42 <laughs> It's ounce. a jet. Yeah, it's a 42 ounce jet. And, uh, you know, they call these knuckle busters or knuckle heads or, you know, they, they used to, fellas used to make these things out of a piston, you know, and a, and a piston ring and get those things to where they could troll them real fast. And this is the made, to, this is the jet actually, and it's made for trolling for Wahoo, if you believe it or not. That thing, you it know, looks you can, like a jet engine. Look yeah, at that. It does. And you can go really fast with them because like I said, the thing weighs 40, I think that's either the 42 or the 48 ounce one. It's, it's heavy. It you is. Know, it's made out of solid stainless steel. Yeah. So, and they also, they all, the same company that makes all these lures also makes some really nice uh, cedar plugs oh. made out of aluminum and stainless steel with really nice skirts. And you can, you know, cedar plugs catch everything as well from yeah. dolphin to wahoo to everything. All right. So you go to redeyetrollinglures.com and check those guys out. Good they, job. They make some good metal headed lures. All right. Good job, Bree. That's some good stuff over there. All right, the Avi Reels Middle Coast Region Captain Bink Grimes has been putting in some work analyzing and finding the best fishing spots up and down the coast. So let's hear what his hard work has come up with. It's easy to talk about the wind this time of year. That's nothing new. The mic one. Been that way forever uh, this month. We just deal with it. We're trying new spots. 
uh, with the tides at optimal, uh, with a rising and fall of the moon. We call it the major and minor uh, bites of the day. We're really focusing on uh, the best times to fish and the most optimal water. Uh, the best bet to catch trout along the middle coast right now has been to weigh uh, strong incoming tides are pushing a bumper crop of glass minnows and mullets to the showgrass shoreline in Matagorda and Port O'Connor. <clears throat> Wading is the best way uh, to hunker down on a leeward shoreline and find fishable water when the wind is blowing your hat off. Uh, in Rockport, guide Rick Price said trout are plentiful on the shorelines on soft plastic. On uh, lighter wind days, he said he's catching fish on top waters or over sand and grass sump. He said small trout have been hanging along the drop off of the intercoastal waterway. In Matagorda, Greens Bio and Middle Ground are holding trout in the potholes on Bass Assassins and uh, Marilure, Little John, and Corky. The afternoon incoming tide has been best since the low tide of the day has been during the early morning hours. Uh, glass minutes begin to show up on the shoreline and diving pelicans uh, die, uh, on the shoreline kind of give away where the, uh, the pelicans are. We got, I mean, where the uh, shad are. We got a really, really bumper crop of shad and glass minutes this year. A uh, big trout continue to show in each Matagorda Bay. Uh, though it's tough to find uh, find them when you're drifting with high winds. Uh, on those light wind days, uh, when you got green water, you have the potential to catch the biggest trout uh, of your life. Uh, boats out of my lodge, we caught fish to seven pounds in 20 to 25 knot winds on a live shrimp on our mid-coast cork. The water's been streaky green, uh, but the fish are there. We've even caught uh, you know, fish to seven to eight pounds and water that you can't, I mean, that looks like chocolate milk. The fish are there, they'll still eat. And Port O'Connor guide, Lynn Smith said, he's been waiting sand and grass for trout to 18 inches on soft plastics. With a higher tide, more trout have been pushed to those back lakes and they've been caught on small top waters and corkies. With the wind blowing over 20 knots on most days, be aware of the floating grass, prepare to throw something that's weedless uh, and just keep, keep that bait in the strike zone. Then the boaters uh, at Bass Drop and Christmas Bay, they've been using live shrimp over the reef for trout. The Back Lake and Port O'Connor and the reefs in San Antonio Bay also produce trout on live shrimp. Redfish, there's a lot of bull redfish cruising the beachfront from Freeport to Port O'Connor. Many surf anglers have targeted those big reds. Most have been caught on crabs and mullet, and squid, and sardines. And, and those same fish are hanging around the jetty along the middle coast. Uh, Surfside Matagorda jetties are accessible by foot while you have to get off, uh, get in the boat to, to hit the Port O'Connor and the Port Aransas jetty. All the back lakes are players right now with the high tides. It's mostly sand and grass in Port O'Connor. Uh, you can drift Pringle, Conti, Shoalwater, Fifth Lake. And in Matagorda, our back lakes are mostly mud and shell and, and kind of tougher to wade. So we work the edges of those uh, lakes where there's a lot of reefs. We make long drifts with Marilure she dogs. We're catching those big reds as they get a running start and just blow the water up. Captain Brett Sweeney has been doing well in Matagorda, uh, posting up and on sand flats on that incoming tide and catching his limits of reds to uh, 12 pounds. Then in Rockport, the redfish have been super consistent on the flats, on cut mullet and shad, according to uh, guide Rhett Price. He said they're also catching them drifting the potholes on paddle tail plastics like bass assassin uh, sea shad. And uh, a lot of them are working the edges of the intercoastal, that two to five foot area where it drops off. We'll go to sheep, sheep heads. A lot of people, this is not the sexiest fish for, for a lot of folks, but man, it's pretty good table fare. A lot of them are, are along the uh, jetty right now. Live shrimp are on the rocks, they've been good. There's also uh, been times we call it the Surfside, Matagorda, Port O'Connor, and the Port Aranges Jetty, tight rigging about three to four foot down. Lots of sheephead have been found uh, around Palachis as well, around Coon Island, uh, Shell Island, and Half Moon Reef. Then those reefs along the north shore line of uh, Matagorda Bay, Twin Island, Matt Island, and Shell Island have been best. Uh, offshore, it's been tough to get offshore with with, with the kind of wind we've had, but a lot of people are targeting bull redfish. Tough to find a day to get offshore when it's pulling 30, but a lot of those fish are just off the beach. Uh, during the spring, you really need to plan your weather days to make sure it's a safe run when you break the jetty. Guide Mike Siegel out of Freeport uh, said he's staying pretty close in 
in about 40 foot of water for those bull redfish. Uh, he's been using crabs and sardine, and he's been releasing the fish to near 40 pounds. There's still a lot of sharks out there when you're chasing those bull redfish in the same area. Uh, and, you know, the snapper's still there as well. You just got to pick and choose your days. You know, we, we've got some northers coming through that's going to uh, lay the, the surf down and lay the, uh, the gulf down, and it's going to get only get better on the, in the coming days. All right, Bink, thanks so much. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the hot spots from the Middle Coast region. Bink says that we're going to go trout are good in East Matagorda Bay while drifting to shell in five feet of water on live shrimp and Middle Coast popping corks, and then Rockport, the trout are best while wading the sand and the grass, and the bull redfish are good on the jetties along the beachfront and crack blue crabs and sardines. <clears throat> I'd say that was a very productive show. Absolutely. You know, very when nice. I hear the guys talking about jetties, I go crazy because when we used to fish the cup, the ESPN Redfish Cup, that was one of the things I really loved about the northern part of Texas, the upper coast, was catching big redfish Oh, man, on big plugs. bull reds. I love it. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you go and catch those fish, and we'll see you next week. Bye. What's behind the green door? <laughs>